Hello, welcome to Olio, my show. My name is Susan Rushton, and before I go any further, I need to thank Atwood Video Productions for hosting ACTV. Thank you very much. But I also need to explain what Olio means. One definition is that Olio has come. No, one definition is that it is. It's, it's short for Oya Padrida, which is Spanish for rotten bowl, which I just get such a kick out of. It's a dish with essentially everything in the world in it. Pork in <laughs> there it is. Pork in all its iterations, like uh, like sausage and pig's feet and bacon as well as chicken, spinach, cabbage, ox meat, lamb, chickpeas, onions, and garlic. As, as, so essentially, as I said, everything in the world in ex except decaffeinated coffee beans and pretzels. That's one definition. Another definition is that oleo is what comes in between acts of a melodrama. So you might have somebody juggling, you might have somebody singing a song, you might have somebody doing a skit. But none of, none of it has anything to do with anything else, and none of it has anything to do with the melodrama. So in other words, it's apples, oranges, and a monkey wrench. So welcome to my monkey wrench. Today, my guest is a writer. Her name is Meredith Cherry. Thank you very much for joining me, Meredith. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes. And you, uh, we, uh, you have been on my show before to promote um, stuff you've written. Yes. And now you're going. To, you're you're here to promote an event that you're that you're being that you're involved with. That's right. It's a four-year event. A four-year event. So, tell me about that. What is this four-year event? So it's called the Centaur Ride, and it's a four-year horseback ride around the United States to go to uh, all 48 lower states to promote uh, or to raise awareness about domestic violence. And why domestic violence? Well, I'm a survivor myself, and uh, when I got out of my abusive relationship a few years ago, I felt so alone when I was in that situation. I felt like nobody else had ever gone through it, nobody knew what it was like, and I found out afterwards that one in three women will go through domestic violence mm. situation in their lifetimes. I had no idea, uh -huh. and I wanted to do something to talk to women uh, everywhere that I could about what the realities are, uh, that they're not alone, that so many women go through this, and there are resources out there for them. Uh, maybe talk to young women who haven't gone through it yet and maybe prevent some of that. Uh, talk to people who know somebody who's going through it and uh, provide information and resources uh, t for them to help their loved ones. Yeah, okay. So I can imagine that being in an abusive situation, the, the, si the situation was such that, that you were isolated. I was very isolated, yeah. yes. Okay. So that would that would make you feel as if you were that you were the only one only woman in the world, and and at that time you were only the only girl, the only girl in the world, mm -hmm. uh, undergoing this. Right. And uh, what on earth do I do? How do I solve solve this problem? How did you solve the problem? It was a very uh, lengthy, drawn out process to solve the problem. Uh, a lot of the issue with leaving is, um, in my mind at least, there's many different opinions about this, is uh, societal misinformation, which is what I'm helping, hoping to help with. Uh, the misconceptions of what domestic violence is. It took me years to even realize that it was abuse. Uh, so you weren't being hit? Initially I was not, uh. and so I didn't realize it was abuse. And then once I began experiencing the more classic uh, physical domestic violence, then I, um, the way that it works, there's a lot of what's essentially brainwashing that goes on between you're the- You're stupid. You don't know what right, you're talking about. You, yeah. I didn't hit you, you just- Fell into my fist. <laughs> you, you made me so angry that I lost control and it's your fault for making me hit you, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And um, 
by the time the physical element begins, the relationship is so, uh, the victim is so dependent on the abuser from the buildup over time of becoming um, essentially their psychological captive, if that's an okay term yes, to use, yes. um, that it's not clear anymore to the victim what is going on in reality. And so it took me years and years to finally realize what was happening. And then once I realized to be able to now figure what? out what to do what about it. What am I going to do? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how many, how many years were you in this situation? Uh, the relationship I, was... I know we took, you asked me not to talk about numbers. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, my own numbers are fine. I, yeah. I just don't have a head for statistics. Yeah. Uh, but um, I was in the relationship for 12 years. Oh, gee. Uh, and technically the whole relationship was not abusive in that the initial part is always just red flags and warning signs. Mm -hmm. uh, you Such learned this minor, later. Right, that yeah. I learned later. So about eight years of abuse uh, uh -huh. of varying, you know, increasing degrees. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I needed to get out for about two years at the end of it. Uh, but it took me that long to actually be able to effectively leave and stay gone. Uh, most women, or on average women who try to leave, uh, a domestic violence relationship, it takes seven attempts before they actually succeed. Mm. Uh, for myself, I lost count. It was dozens and dozens oh. of times. Oh, wow. So. And what, 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 why did you come back? I, uh, part. Money? Well. Was part of it? Where am the, I going to stay is another? Um, that's why I didn't leave for a while mm -hmm. was what am I going to do when I leave? I don't have a job anymore because he hasn't allowed me to work. Mm -hmm. um, I've been told I'm worthless and so why would anyone hire me? Uh, and then once I actually would leave, I would call, which was a big mistake, and say, you know, I hate you, I'm leaving, mm -hmm. I don't like what you did to me, and then it would begin what's called the cycle of violence, uh, the honeymoon mm. stage, where the abuser says, I'm really sorry, Meh. it'll never Meh. happen again, and it's very convincing. And, uh, and you all, love that you person. Loved, yeah, you right. loved him. Even though he's awful, at some point, he was very loving. And, and we so, get used to what we're used to. Right, and you yeah. want it to be okay. You want that relationship to be fine. And uh, so I'd believe him and go back. And uh, a couple times I was returned to him by the police uh, because they didn't understand and I couldn't vocalize it well what was going on. I was not ready to call it abuse at that point. Um, and so without me being able to state that clearly, uh, without me understanding what it was, then I would be returned. Mm. So mm. that was um, scary. That was scary. That yes. was an unfortunate situation. Yes, absolutely. And then they left. Yes. There he was. Right. Oh God, Meredith. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, but no woman should have to go through. No. Uh, and my ride, while it stems from what I went through, it's not about so much what happened to me. Uh, you know, I'm. I don't mind sharing my story if it helps somebody. But there are so many women going through this. And, and everybody's situation is always a little different. Uh, there's all kinds of different abuse. There's physical abuse that everybody knows about. Uh, there's emotional abuse, psychological abuse, sexual abuse, uh, spiritual abuse. Uh, there's several other kinds. Mm -hmm. it, there's just so many different nuances and facets to it. Okay. So, so you're... What is this? This is a centaur ride. Yes. And a, some people might not know what a centaur is. What is a centaur? A centaur is a half horse, half human. And, and a centaur ride is a female centaur. So a half oh, really? woman, half horse. Huh. Mm -hmm. 
Shame on me. <laughs> I'm an English major. I should know that. Central ride. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I, I thought it was you were calling it because you are you are on a horse and you're riding this horse. That too. Uh, okay. Yes. So My little play on words. And yeah. And your horse is Apollo. Yes. How long have you had Apollo? I've had Apollo for two and a half years. Okay. And he knows what he's getting himself into. I've told him. Mm -hmm. I've told him. He's he's uh, he's still getting used to the idea. You're, I think. And you're but being you're training him yes. and riding him longer and longer. Yes. And, okay. So why why on a horse? Well, I love horses. I've been a horsewoman for most of my life, except for when I was in that relationship. Mm, okay. And so when I left, I thought, what have I been missing for these 12 years? Uh, what do I want to bring back into my life that I no had not been able to have for those that time? And the main thing was horses. Horses. Yes. Yeah. And I also wanted to, like I said, go out and help people uh, understand about domestic violence. And so I put the two together and decided I'm going to ride a horse around. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot better for me than uh, bicycling or walking. Uh, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you're, you're starting, you have two, you had two starting dates. You have a web yes. website, AmeritaCherry.com. Mm -hmm. Um, and the def the, the, there's a link to the Centaur ride on your, yes. on your website. And, as we speak, the the website says it's starting in on October first. In October, mm -hmm. but it's in 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 actuality, it's starting next year. Uh, the official start date at this moment is October first, but Plan B, which it's looking more like is going to happen, mm -hmm. is going to be January first. Okay. So new year, new okay. life experience. All right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I can imagine that you want to do this now. Yes, I'd like to leave. <laughs> right now, this you don't even want to be here. Right, <laughs> I'd like to have left last week, yeah. but um, I'm not ready, my horse is not ready, our equipment is not ready, our funding is not ready, and uh, so, so you have to wait. we're gonna wait yeah. until it's right. It's not, uh, there's no time limit, there's no deadline, there's no speed we have to go or time we need to be back. Uh, so it's very flexible, and it's better to just leave when we're actually ready and yeah. do it right. Okay. So you mentioned fundraising mm -hmm. isn't ready. So one of the ways you're raising funds is through, uh, on your website, there's a way to help. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell, us about, tell me about that. There is a GoFundMe.com. Uh, page where you can donate uh, money mm -hmm. and then I'm also looking for support in other ways if you're not able to help financially there's so many so many resources needed for this ride so many uh, people needed to make it successful um, I'm looking for people all over the country with a large yard or bigger Apollo. Uh, yeah. so that I can stop for the night every mm -hmm. 20 miles I'm gonna need to stop somewhere Wow and so that's you know for four years yeah. that's a lot of nights yeah. that I need yeah. to stop somewhere and so uh, somebody to host us for the night uh, even if you live in an apartment maybe you know somebody at some other part of the country mm -hmm. that you can call up and say hey Meredith is gonna be riding through can you put her up for the night okay um, I'll have all my own tent and everything, so I don't need a room, I just need a patch of lawn. Okay. Um, all over the country. Uh, I'm looking for used equipment uh, for myself and for Apollo. Uh, the less I have to buy, the less I have to fundraise. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be starting when we're ready with the training, no matter how much the fundraising has or has not been successful, I'll still do it. So it's not dependent on the fundraising, but of course every bit helps. When you say training, what do you mean? Uh, getting Apollo ready for the road, uh, with mostly with getting him used to things that he'll need along the way, like uh, Dogs, semi trucks, cars, semis. Yeah, okay. um, he's okay right now with cars, bicycles, and dogs. 
uh, and with flappy things like tarps. Mm -hmm. um, so he's definitely making progress, but uh, you know, crowds, baby strollers, um, semi trucks are a big one uh, because we will have to ride along minor highways at some mm -hmm. points. Um, and uh, water crossings, he hates water, so oh. that's a big one for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, any sort of situation that you'd think nothing of walking down the street, he uh -huh. has to get used to. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So, so there are, there are ways, there's, 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 if we look at your, at your website, mm -hmm. MeredithCherry.com, yes. um, there's, there's things, there's links to click on, to, this is what you need, this is how, how, how you can help, this is the GoFundMe website. Right. Um, and you are, I'm assuming that you are, are you, uh, you're going to take your computer, yes, your laptop or phone, tablet, yeah. phone, <laughs> to, to uh, inform newspapers, mm -hmm. TV stations, radio stations that you're, here, I'm coming, I'll be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I would please give me your, um, your, uh, please phone me or come out, and this is where I'll be. Mm -hmm. You, and you have a Facebook page. Yes. Okay. And so, Twitter. And Twitter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you you have no shortage of ways to publicize yourself. Uh, right. With the event. The, right. The, your your trip. Um, have you have you experienced uh, interest from from other places? From other from from for example the the oh I don't know the Minnesota equivalent of stand up placer. Um, I've not contacted anyone outside the region yet because it's too soon. Okay. I won't know exactly. I have a general idea of where I'll be at any given day for mm -hmm. the ride, but it's going to be very uh, touch and go the whole time on depending on how many miles we actually cover on any given okay. day. Uh, it's all an average and all an estimate. So it's a little early to contact anyone in Minnesota yet. Yeah, okay. Um, but I have been getting uh, some interest from individuals around the country. I've already gotten uh, several people around who have said, hey, when you come this way, stop at my place and I'll put you up for the night. I know people in the horse industry that will be really interested mm -hmm. for the surrounding region. I know domestic violence shelters that would love to have you come and talk to the women. Mm -hmm. uh, anything like that is helpful. Um, I also will be on a British radio station, uh, podcast rather, um, in, I don't have the date on me, uh, no. but soon, okay. yeah, soon. so that's scheduled. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some interest. Yeah. It's becoming international interest already, and well, I haven't cool. even started. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. So and so, I'm assuming you'll be contacting schools. Yes. And high schools and high schools and middle colleges schools and, and colleges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, have you, does you you are you live in Nevada? No, you live in Grass Valley. Mm -hmm. Have you told the Grass Valley paper? If, if Grass Valley Union about the it. The Union, yes, I've talked to the Union. Okay. Yeah, they've they're they're talking with me about doing an article, but it's a little early yet for yeah. them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So in, indeed, we are early. Yes. Aren't we? Okay. <laughs> you said, yes. Well, it's not too early because I am in my final stages of preparation. I do need to already start getting the word out, and it's never too early to talk about the realities of domestic violence, which is the point of the ride. Yeah. So. Okay. So. Um, how do you expect this ride to change the fact of d domestic violence or people's minds about it? I'd l I hope that by talking more about it, that um, it becomes less stigmatized. There's a definitely the thought out there that it's the woman's fault. Mm -hmm. um, that they're stupid to stay in a relationship, they're stupid to get in a relationship like that, and how can they be so stupid as to do that? Um, why doesn't she just leave? What a moron. And 
that's just the reality of what the thought is about it. There's not a lot of discussion about it, even though so many women have gone through it. Mm -hmm. They are one often out one, one out of three. three. Yeah. Uh, and usually by the age of 34. So a lot of young women going through it and have been through it uh, and not a lot of talking about it. It's, uh, it's often seen as this shameful part of your past mm -hmm or even if you're not ashamed about it, it's that awful time you don't want to think about mm -hmm. and you don't want to talk about. And it's therefore nobody knows about it. Nobody realizes how prevalent it is. Nobody... Uh, it's just something we don't talk about. Right. Yeah. There's not this awareness. And so hopefully by talking to people, um, I can help them maybe see the red flags in a relationship before they get too deep into mm -hmm. it. Uh, maybe they can uh, find some hope in my survival uh, to get themselves out of it. Yeah. They maybe will hear about a resource they didn't know about uh, because nobody was talking about it mm -hmm. and uh, be able to use that. So Now you say that um, that people say how stupid of her mm -hmm. why did she even let herself get into that situation did you hear that not directly uh, well not being called stupid but i definitely got the well why didn't you just leave sooner mm -hmm. question uh, which is a reasonable question i'm glad people are asking it because then i can tell them why mm -hmm. i didn't leave sooner uh, it was financial, it was, uh, it was confusion. Emotional. It was emotional. Yeah. The whole, uh, with all the different kinds of domestic violence that I was talking about, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, whatever, the whole point on the abuser's side is control. It's all about control. Yeah. And so when you are in a very controlled situation, when you've lost your independence, which you've gradually given up over time. So you don't have money. You don't right. have access to a phone. You don't have a car. And initially you give up little things that don't matter so that you can get through the argument or get through the day mm -hmm. or get through a tough time. And you say, it's okay. I'll just take a back seat here. And then you give up a little more and a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, over time you lose control entirely. Yeah. And then you're stuck. Yeah. How old are you, Meredith? I'm 33. Okay. You are, are you seem like a you look like a young 33. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um when you when you go and talk to uh t teenagers about this, they will uh, maybe I don't know. I it's been years since I've talked to teenagers and um uh, I I I am so so far away from them age-wise that they that I that I'd be sort of like the teacher in the Charlie Brown special, <laughs> but not you. You 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 wouldn't. They would listen to you, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Um, if they'd see someone who looks like themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, again, this is Meredith Cherry is uh, has has her website meredithcherry.com, um, and information about it. And um, yeah, okay. And so you've done something similar to, like this before. You've you've written another book about bicycling yeah. around California. S similar in a very loose sense, yes. And similar in that it was in that a long journey. Yeah. Yes. Long journey. Uh, and my books, I actually have two books now. They're the Along the King's Road series. Uh, one is for traveling along the El Camino Real of California from mission to mission by bicycle. And the other one is to do it by car. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how long does it did you find that it takes by bicycle? It took me uh, 22 days. I was trying to do a mission a day, so that's 21 missions. Uh, and I did it in 21 days 
uh, with a support vehicle to help me over the mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were taking it all by bicycle, it would depend on, of course, how fast you pedal and how long you like yeah. to sightsee at yeah. each mission, but it could take anywhere from uh, 18 to 30 something days, I mm -hmm. would say. Okay. And you are, you've moved from bicycle to horse mm -hmm. for, for this project. Yes. Because you're going to be in the, it's going to, you're going to, put 20 miles a day, you're going to be out in the winter. <laughs> right. Well, in the winters on the horses, uh, on the horse, I will stop uh, until the weather clears. Okay. Uh, when I'm in North Dakota and winter comes, mm. I'll be there a long time, yes. but I'll just stay put somewhere. Okay. Uh, find some seasonal job and work over winter until spring comes and then keep right on riding. All right. Mm -hmm. Is there a book in this? Oh, I'm sure there will be. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. If you want to um, contribute to Meredith's fund, um, to Meredith's project, uh, please uh, web, uh, log on to her website, meredithcherry.com. And if you want to talk to her, write, contact her, contact her at Ms. Ms. Meredith Cherry at gmail dot com. Um, uh, how old is Apollo? He's eight. Okay, and he's he's going to be nine by the time you start. He'll be nine the spring after we start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I appreciate your coming by, Meredith. Uh, thank you very much for sharing this information. Um, Again, if you are interested in, in contacting Meredith, um, meredithcherry.com, and there's, a, uh, tell me that, that the name of the fund, GoFundMe? GoFundMe.com. GoFundMe and mm -hmm. if you're interested in um, places to stay, uh, places, supplies, uh, mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. um, or even just if you are part of a network of people that you think might be interested in helping. Yeah. Contact me. Yeah. Any, you know, just write me and say hi. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Meredith. Thank you. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you again.